Do you uh, do you know when Dana is coming? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Hello, Dirk. Hello, Monique. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hello, everybody. Mm -hmm. Hello. Bonjour. Bonjour. Hello. And um, so, uh, Dirk, do you want to call Dana to see uh, or what? Uh, we it? just wait for her. Uh, let's wait until five past ten. Yeah, wonderful. And then I will start the introduction and then we uh, see. Uh, do you have any date in mind for the next month or not yet? Uh, I um, suggest that if we cancel uh, the event in Budapest, then we should um, then we should have the next um video conference at that time because Same that's day. blocked anyway yeah, yeah. Okay. okay what was the day i don't remember so 28 what day is that uh, that is the saturday so probably the previous day would be a little bit better isn't it uh, 27 friday so we have to think perhaps we make it on a friday well we can make it on friday that's not a problem yeah, yeah. twenty seven. Friday was uh, was mentioned as a rival day. Yeah, yeah, in sure. Budapest. In Budapest, no, that's a good okay. Twenty seven could be the day. Yeah. yeah. Next meeting. It's just uh, to avoid uh, to, to avoid the weekends in some way. Okay. Uh, uh, Somebody is waiting again. Open the door. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ah, Dana is here. <laughs> ah, Dana is here. Good. Yeah, Good. I I was waiting for ages to to get connected. <laughs> so good morning. Good morning, morning. Dana. Twenty. That's good. Twenty participants. <laughs> it is now five past ten. Yes. Good morning, everybody. I would like to welcome you very warmly for our fourth video conference on Zoom. We have um, at least 25 registered uh, participants, which is a very good number. I see on the list right now, and you can click on your screen to have on the right side the list of participants. And the number right now is 20. So another five or, or even more will, will join us. Um, I would like to um, uh, not only welcome you, but uh, I hope that you are all happy, despite uh, the very difficult and worsening situation in Europe. And uh, I also hope very much that you and your family you are still healthy and please uh, be careful and stay healthy, all of you. The, the session today, which is scheduled for two hours, we may not need two hours. If we run out of uh, topics after one and a half hour, that's okay. And then we just uh, stop it. But uh, we have for ourselves until 12 o'clock anyway. The um, conference will be recorded and I uh, presume that all of you agree that your contributions will be recorded. If any protest from your side, you have to mention that very clearly. But I mean, we are among ourselves and uh, I think that is a good thing that later uh, we can also share the content of the conference with other colleagues from members of URAC. It is not a public event, it's an internal event so that uh, people can look at it. Let me um, brief you quickly. I mean, you are all experienced, I know that. But so let me brief you quickly on the etiquette, uh, the rules of the game. Um, I see many in my list, many participants which still have 
um, their microphone on. Please, when you don't speak, then switch it off, please. That means um, you have a button on the left side, uh, down corner, where you can uh, switch off your microphone. It is uh, to improve the quality of, um, of the sound for everybody. And I still see uh, Dario and Natalia and Olga and Peter Hansen and Dorita. They all have their microphone on. So be kind and switch it off, please. And only um, use it when you want to speak. We have agreed um, in the organizing team that as we have today, now we are already 23, but we have at least 25 participants. We um, only give you two minutes for your contribution. Um, because if we give two minutes then, and you keep to two minutes, then we have already used 20, uh, 50 minutes uh, just for the contributions, then that means that we do not yet have had um, a discussion. And the discussion is as important as the contributions, as, as we know. If you want to exchange messages, then you have a button on the downside, which is called chat. So you can chat with others, either with everybody or with selected persons. And you can put little messages there. The um, topic of today's uh, conference is, as we have informed you, uh, how to maintain family relations and social contacts in times of the corona pandemic. What are the chances? Do we have innovative ideas which we can use? Which solutions uh, do we know about? what are good practices from which we can learn. So I expect from you that in your two minutes contribution, you just highlight very briefly um, something which you find that it is useful to know about how we can relate to the most important people in, your, in our lives, and that is in the first place, our family. But not less important, our friends and colleagues, of course. But sometimes we would also like to uh, connect to clubs where we are members of, to other people, and even to institutions, public institutions, private institutions, from which we would like to have information, et cetera, et cetera. That goes to show how important the new um, technologies are it is not only Zoom for conferences, but it is WhatsApp and other, um, and, and Skype, which we can use. And that is, we, we live in a very good time for that, because even over the long oceans, if your parents or your children or your nieces or nephews are in New Zealand or in China or in uh, Alaska, it doesn't matter. You can see them, you can talk to them, it's much better than the telephone, and uh, you can use these uh, devices in, in very creative ways. So um, let's see what uh, the experiences are. Dana will take over right now, and she will be the moderator of your contributions. She will tell you how she is going to do that. And um, at the end of um, the conference, after the um, <clears throat> discussion, which we will have until at the latest 12 o'clock, just before I will give you a little summary and Dana will inform you about our next meetings. Dana was not yet here when at er and earlier we said um, the time for the next conference, the teleconference, if we have to cancel the conference, the uh, real conference in Budapest, then the next uh, teleconference could be on Friday, the 27th 
of November. Dana, please note that so that you can repeat it at the end, that we can agree on that. And now I stop my big mouth. I am uh, extremely interested in hearing your contributions. And um, I wish you now a good presentations and later a very pleasant and interesting and formative discussion round. Thank you very much. I switch off my microphone. So welcome uh, to our fourth Zoom Iraq conference everybody and um, I will go through the list in alphabetic order and give you the floor for two minutes because Arlet Van Assel apologized for having some other obligations so we will start with the Czech Republic and I would like to give the floor to Mil Schweiz. Thank you. I am very glad to see you all. And uh, I am also glad that once in my life I am the first. <laughs> okay, I don't promise that I will um, speak only two minutes. Uh, maybe you excuse me that it will be two and a half minutes. Okay, I uh, start. To, I short uh, my contribution. So that uh, answered how to maintain family relations and social context in times of uh, the corona pandemic. <clears throat> it's a difficult way. The mutual visits are limited by the existing restrictions of, uh, related to COVID and sometimes also by the number of participants. Taking into consideration the situation, the modern technology, as Dirk said, is almost the only one decision how to keep the family relation in the case of large restrictions of movement of people and in case of state of uh, emergency. It exists not only in the Czech Republic now, except of phones, of course. But there is also another occasion, use WhatsApp, as they said, I, I repeat once again, uh, and uh, many countries uh, give much money uh, to seniors for adoption of new methods of communication through their organizations, of course. I am glad to say that uh, in, uh, in my country it exists, but it's not yet enough. The state authorities um, should pay more attention to this very, very important moment and consider, uh, consolidate more effort for education of older people if they want to have modern, up-to-date seniors. <clears throat> Don't forget that it's sure that there must be a mutual two-way effort and desire. For example, parents and children, that means for example, parents and children who want to contact each other. In case that family works well, there is no problem and COVID does not brutally interfere in mutual relations. It just takes more patience. Worse situation comes when the seniors are in a nursing house and the pandemic does not allow the visits. Also in such case comes new modern technology gadgets which will allow at least platonic distance contact between the members of family. That confirms the conclusions that modern technology maintains family relations, although nothing can replace it but love and respect for the elderly and among the people. This also applies uh, to social contact and necessary to say, not only during the pandemic. Pandemic taught us to be humble, considerate, patient, polite, helpful, and on the contrary, not to be selfish. I wish these features would remain among us for a long time, let us say forever. That's all, I shorted a little Thank bit you. my contribution. Thank you, Miloš. It was a very comprehensive message that you uh, gave us. So now it is my turn and uh, because I am running a big center of lifelong learning, uh, mainly for people between 60 and 19, I can tell you that despite all these modern technologies that are available, people are yearning for a live social contact. 
they are missing is ter missing it terribly and they would like to meet in person uh, i have done myself several memory trainings for south africa uh, for india um, and uh, so it these are the means that we can use now, uh, but uh, I, I feel myself that uh, it is difficult to replace that direct contact. So hope for, uh, let's hope all of us that we will be able to meet again with our friends, with our families, uh, with all the people that uh, are concerned in person in the future. First, I would like to give the floor to Paul Anker. I can see him, uh, the representative of uh, Global Seniors. Can you uh, hear me? Yes. Thank you uh, to uh, Dirk for his welcome and thank you also to you, Dan, and to Monique for setting up this event. Uh, I am, as you said, uh, Paul Anker Andersen uh, and represent the Association of Global Seniors from Denmark. I will refer to, do, to two different ways to maintain social contact. One example from the association and one of a more private nature. In Global Seniors, we work mostly in groups. We have, for example, a group of 16 people who follow development in the uh, European Union. The group has held a meeting on Zoom under this pandemic every first Thursday of the month. The point is that the participant enter a casual dialogue about the current situation. Only the day before the meeting, the host sends out a proposal for three extremely broad topics we can discuss. Uh, in September, the agenda was one, EU's next seven years budget, who won? Two, how, go, how good are we pointing fingers at Hungary and Poland to comply with the rule of law ourselves? And the point three, should the EU stop immigration and how? This meeting starts with an introduction of maximum five minutes from the person who has proposed the agenda. By choosing burning topical issues and by minimizing the presentations, we have succeeded in creating a real conversation where everyone participates very actively. In fact, more than has been the case in our normal activities. All this could also have happened at physical, at physical meetings. But I think the corona pandemic has sharpened our recognition that the key is a meeting and a conversation between people who have chosen to act and become wiser together. I think we all look forward to meeting our fellows that hour on the first Thursday of the month. The second practice I want to share is more private. Throughout the pandemic, my wife and I have kept in touch with a couple of friends during what we have called Skype dinners. We invite in turn, on the day we put on a clean tablecloth, flowers on the table and prepare a good dinner and opens a bottle of wine. We sit down at the table facing the camera and open the Skype conversation. We are welcome. During the two to three hours we are together on, we, we forget the circumstances. The talk goes and we take another glass of wine. There is never a long way home. That was what I have chosen to share with you, perhaps by now, but in the practice lies, if you handle it with care, also the opportunity to rediscover what good social contact is all about. Thank you. Thank you, Paul Anker. So the next on my list is Peter Hansen from Denmark, the Danish seniors. So uh, I will uh, 
So about the situation in Denmark, it is uh, were not so bad as it was in uh, in the spring. It is so that uh, people can now meet, but uh, with a few restrictions, the people who are suffering most are the people uh, in the nightclubs and the people uh, going to waste. We have limitations there, but. Uh, what is actually uh, good is that we uh, are keeping our schools open and family relations are being kept very well. So uh, in that field, it is uh, good, but uh, private, uh, I must say that, for example, I'm able to uh, see my mother at least once a week. So it is uh, good. and. Uh, when it comes to uh, the COVID situation, I will uh, say that the situation is not so bad in Denmark as uh, in many other countries, but uh, there is a big awareness of uh, the development of this uh, pandemic. So uh, we will uh, hope for things to improve within the next month, but up to now, we it's a very uncertain time we are living in and uh, we can only hope that we will not reach the same situation as in the spring with uh, a, a total lockdown. So that's the situation right now. Thank you very much about the Danish situation, about the report of Danish situation and now we are coming, oh, I, yeah, we are coming to uh, to France. Uh, so Moira, is Moira with us? Moira? Alan? No, she is not. Oh, so she was supposed to be with us. Oh. So, uh, so Monique, it is your yeah, turn. <laughs> yes. Hi, uh, I think uh, Moira told us that she is in the south of France and uh, she, she's yeah. not, not sure that she can... Uh, I, see. I see. Okay, so my turn. Um, first, uh, I'll say, uh, like uh, everybody, that uh, the best uh, ways to uh, communicate at the moment are, of course, uh, new technologies. I mean, digital technologies like uh, phone, WhatsApp, Zoom. Um, uh, another way is, of course, writing, writing emails. Um, and when I have seen a sort of meeting is on the internet, but now, now I, now I, no, 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 I can't. Oh, oh, oh! He didn't turn Wait. off. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm admitting. Uh, I think it's a, uh, so she will be able to. To join afterwards with a with a phone. Yeah, yeah, the, oh yeah, yeah. no, Peter! Uh, Peter, uh, Peter uh, turn off your <laughs> turn off your microphone, please. Okay, uh, Peter, yeah. Peter. No. Uh, Wait a minute. Okay. Uh, no, he is he is. Uh, uh, Peter, uh, let's close. Can it. you turn him off? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I, I try. Okay, good. I I, I did it. And um, by the way, uh, I think uh, Mikolo 1957 is going to, yeah. we can uh, uh, join us. Okay, so I continue. Um, so uh, we can, of course, uh, besides that, write emails. Um, and we can send pictures. So you have to turn off uh, Paul for uh, Butkus. Butkus, yeah, I'm going to look who's, where's Butkus here. Okay, désactiver le son. So, um, yeah, besides talking, sending images, uh, sending photographs can help. I mean, um, you see your grandchildren or doing something. I mean, it's... Uh, it's not words, it's pictures, it's visual, it's important. And it shows what people can show what people are doing every day in, in life. Um, you can still organize little family meetings, uh, six people in France, not more, but anyhow, 
uh, at home, <laughs> eventually. Um, you can uh, uh, organize, of course, um, discussions on, on Zoom. In fact, uh, we are trying now with my association, eSeniors, uh, to organize something which we call Happy Hour. Uh, once uh, every two weeks or once every month. I mean, it's a little bit like here and uh, it will be, so it, it's a community in some, in some way who is going to decide to, to come together every second week and we call it happy hour, virtual, virtual happy hours from five to seven or from five to six um, every second week and each time, of course, with a specific thematic because, um, well, okay, so it has to be organized in advance. Um, innov innovative ideas are, for instance, uh, I've been uh, uh, talking a lot with my grandchildren, which are 4,000 kilometers away, and we use Zoom with a whiteboard, and we uh, play Pictionary, and it's wonderful. We have been uh, playing bingo also, distance, uh, so there are new ways of playing distance on online with uh, with Zoom, and it's really not very complicated. Um, and uh, I've I've been forcing my grandchildren, also one is eight years old, to write on by email to make an email and to write by email. And uh, now it's nearly uh, it's uh, soon Christmas, uh, yeah, Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever. Uh, for the end of the, in December, and I already asked them to tell me which kind of presents they would like, and so they are going, they are writing a list, and it takes time, and we discuss about the about the presents they are going to uh, have for um, Christmas. Um, and by the way, uh, because they uh, write, they uh, have another language than mine, so we we are using Google Translate to exchange. Mails, uh, because so Google Translate is going to, is making the translation between. In fact, in my case, it's Hebrew, but uh, it's between Hebrew and French. We are translating by Google Translate, um, and uh, yeah, on the same uh, image than Happy Hour, uh, I just mentioned that uh, I'm working as e-seniors with a daycare center for uh, MCI for other sick people. And we are trying to introduce also Zoom for the carers, for the, for the caregivers, professional and non-professional, and to uh, be and to teach even the MCI people who uh, to uh, so that they will be able to make games, distance games, uh, uh, because they cannot go anymore to the daycare center. Okay, that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Monique. And uh, we, we, you also got now the, the new, uh, new uh, measure that you can't leave your home uh, after nine, or is it in the evening? Uh, yeah, no, in, we, are not allowed to go, we are not allowed to go out after nine. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, yesterday night, I, I had my son who came back by train and... Uh, I, I printed out the train ticket and I, I, I took my car to go to the train, train station at 10 o'clock in the night. And I, I, I didn't know if I would be arrested. <laughs> but then, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So thank you very much. Francois, would, do you want to... to I, yes. I am ready to give you the floor if you would like to speak. Yes, I would. As a supplement to what Monique presented, I think it is um, first important point in the attitude and personal environment. Uh, our facts are not similar if we are alone or if we are in, the, in family. And I think, I think that everyone is more and less affected by this pandemic and also in their minds. And I think we must take care of the mind. And um, for family relations, sorry, but I think that uh, the phone is also important 
not only Skype or Zoom and email, and why I think that uh, telephone and contact by telephone is important for me. And uh, je, I think also we must not allow yourself, uh, ourselves to be locked in by this pandemic and we must care for the other, not also for us, but for the other. Uh, thank you, Francois. It is uh, very important what you said. And I would like just to add that um, what uh, comes um, up in our country now is uh, talking about the, uh, the state of positive mind that it is the, the best protection that is increasing our own immunity. So that we shouldn't, uh, you know, we shouldn't be under stress because of the present situation if we are able to avoid it, if we are able to somehow to try to find even the, the good aspects in the present situation. So thank you. It was, uh, it was very important. So, and now who is on uh, my list is Dirk, Germany. I'm not really Germany, but uh, I serve as your president. Um, yes, of I, course, I, but I, we I, don't I, have anyone else from Germany, so <laughs> we have to stress <laughs> it. <laughs> okay, um, I, I do not want to use much time because we said two minutes and uh, I will even be shorter. What um, seems to me very important is that we make sure that everybody at any age has access to the um, advanced uh, technological communication means. Uh, that everybody has access to a computer or an iPhone or something of that kind, which really um, guarantees that uh, connections can be made to those who are close to our heart and um, not only that we, everybody has access, but that we help everybody to use these tools in an adequate manner. Um, many people um, I know around me, uh, older persons who say, well, I'm not sure that I can manage, etc." We need to help them and to give them assistance uh, to use these devices. That is my first remark. My second remark is, it is uh, perhaps a nice idea to go back to your memories and say, who are the people in the past uh, you have not connected with over the last 10 years? Your old friends from university, from school, from whatever it is, and just try to get back to them, to widen your network of communication and contact them and say, hi, I have not heard from you for the last 15 years. Are you still here, et cetera, et cetera. And that can help to intensify the communications with a larger network and to exchange and enrich, enrich yourself. These are only two points which I would like to highlight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dirk. And now I would like to give the floor to Gabor Hegesi from Budapest, from Hungary. Mm, thank you, Dana. Um, welcome, everybody, from Budapest. Eva is sending her best greetings, but unfortunately, again, she has a parallel Zoom meeting uh, in the Hungarian Association. So you have to accept my presence and <laughs> short presentation. Uh, well, um, it's a great topic. And of course, there could be many, many combinations depending on the life situation of the person and also the phase situation of the epidemic. The worst case when you are alone, no big family, no small family even, and the quarantine phase. That was awful for everybody. Now it's a little bit better because no real quarantine anymore. And, and uh, we, we can have 
really positive ideas because we are over the shock of the first phase. It was terrible. We discussed it last time. Now it's much better because we really had to learn and were able to learn uh, uh, new technological um, solutions. You were also telling us, so I will not go into each of them because they are similar to each other. And the atmosphere is much better now than it used to be. Um, uh, so uh, let, let me speak about maybe one type of, uh, of, of situation. Um, most of elderly people are living either alone or with, uh, if they are lucky, with their uh, couple, with their husbands or wives. And uh, if they are lucky again, they have children, but basically not in the same flat, maybe in the same city or maybe in the country or as Monique said maybe 20,000 kilometers from there for example as I had my daughter in Australia and uh, we do exactly the same what you were talking about we use all the possible technology well I use Viber I have very good experiences but Zoom is okay and every other um, technology uh, the, the, this, the, this is very well, well known. Everybody has either mobile uh, phone or computer. So technologically, people can, can use it. Uh, the other type of people who do not have families, uh, the association is, is doing a great job. There is a system of calling each other and there is a system of everybody has one, two, three person they are responsible for. They call them on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, on the same day. So there is a, a knowledge about the contact. If I want to talk to somebody or if I want uh, to ask something, I have a, a, a real contact with each other. And parallelly with this, and I finish it, I can see this face and you are right <laughs> to finish uh, that, that 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 there are uh, uh, cultural events for example we go on with the university of the elderly uh, every two three weeks there is a, a, an organized uh, lecture uh, at the university or of course without people uh, and people are sitting at home and, and watching it and, and, and discussing it. Or we have a club of, of books. Everybody is reading the same book. Uh, and in every three, four weeks, we are talking about that. So meanwhile, the people are reading and, and then we come together on the web and, and, and talking to each other. So there are many other examples, but I stop here now. <laughs> Thanks for, for the floor. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Gabor. Uh, so I, I would just, I would like to mention that uh, the problem is that only half of my students, who are in number of 3,000, are having access uh, to the internet. So it means that they are unable to share, you know, such meetings or to even to go for online lectures. And especially those are uh, seriously affected with uh, not having any social contact, only maybe through telephones with some friends. So thank you. And now we are coming to... You have the Italy. iPhone. You have the iPhone now. Look, iPhone might, might be uh, Mikolo. Yes, that's me. Oh, good, good, good. Mikolo, so we don't want to skip you. So Maya... Uh, welcome yes. to our conference and the floor is yours, Croatia. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. perfectly. Perfectly. See and he here. Okay. So good morning and I'm very glad to be able to be with you this morning to share this experience. I send you the regards from Mrs. Vucemilovic, who was unable to attend this meeting. I'll try shortly to replace her. I hope you can see the images behind me. Can you see the sea no. and palm trees? So uh, I, I'm in the second biggest city no. in Croatia, the most beautiful in the world. Of course, uh, we are facing the same problem as the whole world, uh, especially the problem with the third age, with all the people. Uh, those who are in a nursing home, they cannot, they're not allowed to go out. And this is a big problem for them. 
And the only solution for that is on these uh, technical devices and, and these ways of communication. But as it was heard uh, previously, not everyone has the access to, uh, to internet and to this new media and not anyone uh, know how to, to, to use them. I myself have my, my mom, my mom, my mother, she's almost 90. She will be 90 in January, I hope. And she still lives alone in her flat, in her apartment. She can do that, but uh, as we live very close, I'm visiting her every day. Uh, taking this risk, I'm uh, taking all the precautions, but I know that if she would be left alone without this um, human contact, not contact, but just seeing me, having little chat with me. We are just chatting uh, every afternoon, uh, watching TV together. And I know this is uh, the best for her. And I know that without this, this would not be a good situation for her. So in spite of all these technical devices and ways of communication, um, direct contact, personal contact, when you see someone's face and when you have the possibility to chat with someone directly, this is something that cannot be replaced with any media. But on the other hand, we have to face the facts. Uh, numbers in Croatia, unfortunately, are no more so good as they used to be in spring. We were doing very well in spring and beginning of uh, summer. Then we had many people, many visitors coming to, to see us, to visit us in July and August. And unfortunately, now we have every day growing numbers, which means growing um, a danger for this population, for all the population. It's not an easy situation. I'm, unfortunately, I cannot give you any innovative ideas, any new ideas, apart from what was heard before and apart from the hope from all of us that this will end soon. So, goodbye. Maya, thank you very much. And our best regards to Petra Vucemilovic. Thank you. Thank you on behalf of Thank, Thank you for being with us. And now Italy is on my list. Uh, Dario Bracco, our long-term uh, member. Yes. How are you, Rana? Uh, you are always younger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, we are looking at the phenomenon of pandemic from a uh, uh, the center of the family in Italy. You know, Italy is a long uh, country and very different uh, way of life from south to north, from east to west. But the family is the uh, cop kit of the society uh, in Italy. And we, we discovered that first of all, this pandemic is only at the beginning. We are not neither finish, neither solve the problem of pandemic. Pandemic is increasing number and uh, and problems. So we we cannot uh, make uh, some uh, consideration, final consideration, but only observe what uh, what is, uh, is happening. Eh? And uh, we um, distinguish uh, four uh, four item to consider. Three negative and one positive. The negative are the fear. People is fear to lose the health and the health care now. Or lose the job. Or not being able to follow children, their children. And lose update and culture. This is the fear we are uh, considering. Another item is uh, the Envy and jealousy uh, versus uh, those who can work from home because uh, we are talking about uh, smart working. But only 22-25% of people can work from home. The order must go to uh, the, 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 the office or, or the, the, the factory. And so they start uh, some jealousy. You can stay at home into the bed with the family and uh, we must go risking our health uh, for, for maintain our job. Uh? And uh, versus the people rich, the separation from rich and poor is, uh, is larger than in the past. And uh, to those uh, who live in open space, 
as me. I am living in the county. I have a garden and, uh, around me, and uh, the, uh, I don't suffer to to be uh, to be to stay at home. Uh, it's not obligatory for me. I I go uh, in the garden. And the third item we consider is the pain. Pain is who suffer from virus post. Uh, if you succeed in uh, uh, go out of the virus, uh, you will have a problem of your health for months. It's not finished like in flu. Huh? It's very different. And uh, another pain is uh, for people who lost uh, relatives uh, and, uh, and friends. We are talking each day of 50 uh, people dead and like a, 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 a airplane crash. Huh? So uh, each day. Huh? And uh, who lost uh, uh, job? A lot of people are losing job and opportunity. So means not to find another job. This is concerned with the three negative points on, on, uh, on observation for, from us, from our organization, sociologists and doctors. Eh? Positive is resilience and courage. There are a lot of people who have successfully in contrast the, uh, the virus. It take courage, take force. It's uh, the uh, resilience. Eh? And the reaction is uh, strong, uh, character. And uh, both for in, in the family and in the social uh, relationship. So they take care of a uh, computer, even uh, 80 uh, years old, and uh, a lot of examples uh, who, who, who support this uh, idea. And who uh, strengthen and found the spirituality? A lot of people uh, enter in the church. Uh, for the first time, because the church uh, uh, represents uh, a strong point of uh, uh, confidence. So this is what we are approaching. But as I said, the, the problem of pandemic is just the beginning. I, we are afraid, the doctors are afraid, that this uh, will enlarge uh, in an in a, uh, un and what is an un uncontrollable uh, way. We, we are losing the contact of, the, of this, um, these morbs. We are not able to care uh, just the number, I believe in the number. We need in Italy 5,000 more doctor specialists in anesthesia today. Maybe within six months, we will need more. So I invite everybody to stay careful and maintain isolation content by the technology and non directly a mask and all 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 the 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 the, 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 the subject and and the argument you can uh, put in the in on on the on the uh, daily activity to uh, avoid uh, to take this, uh, this uh, virus. Uh, thank you, I'm Dario. Not uh, too much optimist. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> I, uh, you realize that I gave you much more time than two minutes, but because Italy was the most affected country in... Uh, elastic, in the, elastic time. Uh, in the first wave. So we wanted to learn from your experience, from your feelings, from your attitude. So it, it is important for us. I wanted to add only that when, you know, fear is uh, one of the main aspects that is all around us. And when my uh, students are calling me and then I can see that they are really scared. So I am saying, so, just there is a light at the, at the end of the tunnel. They are building the field hospital in, uh, in Prague 9, you know, five, uh, 500 additional beds for uh, COVID patients if necessary. 
if needed. And I say, imagine that when we end there, the young, handsome soldiers will take care of us. And everyone starts to laugh, <laughs> you know. So just to, to put balance, you know, that the fear doesn't, uh, doesn't actually prevail. So now on my list is Razi from Israel. I don't know if he made it this time because he was keen to, to participate. Monique, do we have him? Uh, I, I don't see him, but I, I don't see him. I don't know what's happening, but uh, I, I must mention that uh, Roland just entered the, the room. Roland Grunder from Switzerland. So I, you... I noticed, and I put okay. him on my list. I noticed. It's okay. No, yeah, no, I, know I don't know what's, yeah. what's going on with uh, Razi. Razi. I don't know either, because he was keen to, to attend. So now we are coming to Latvia. Terezia Makare and Alisa. Okay, so uh, on behalf of our RASA, and uh, we want to dwell a little bit on the situation now in Latvia and in Riga. Uh, so um, we've uh, won the prize, the first prize in the um, all Latvian competition in new projects for digital skills and green mobility. And we won not only the first place, but the prize as well. And on the 13th of October, uh, we had a um, guest from European Commission for Social Matters, General Director Katrina Ivan Kovica Kuzevica. And the main topic of our discussion was the social pillar for those uh, who are still living in poverty mm -hmm. and uh, who suffer from social injustice in all European countries. So um, the, in this respect, it's also, we want to ask all the members of the URAC uh, what is their opinion of, uh, on this theme? And uh, maybe you can uh, just uh, give us your own uh, view on this problem. So, and as you know, the, also in uh, Latvia, just from the 17th of October, is uh, also uh, proclaimed the, the situation of um, uh, pandemic, and uh, the second wave of uh, COVID just now in force. It's even more severe than before. And um, uh, just our government was pressed to adopt uh, strict restrictions in this sphere. And just now we, um, we don't be able to conduct uh, our education of programs in person and we are forced to do it via internet. So, and we develop various programs in uh, line dancing, in um, uh, physical activities, uh, which are of most importance for the people of senior age. And also we've opened a new portal, uh, it's called Air Seniors. Uh, which will be of much importance uh, to put these programs in life. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so, and also we are um, uh, not interrupting uh, the ties and uh, our uh, activities during this severe pro uh, period. Yeah. We'll try to be in co contact with every member of our society. So uh, we, have, we can help them if they need, and they are seeking uh, also uh, help from us. So we get in touch in this, but, uh, uh, with everybody of them. So, and also we um, didn't stop our new project, which is a Latvian project for Riga. It is the construction of the new park garden in the center of our uh, capital. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a very interesting project and we hope that every European country would be presented by the um, rest by the species of plants and flowers there. So, and uh, we'll work on this um, new project 
um, we hope that all the European countries coming, oh, yeah. people from coming uh, here to visit will be able to come to this garden and uh, enjoy it. Okay? So thank you for your attention and uh, best respects and best regards from Mrs. Uh, uh, Theresia Matskara, the head of our board, and from me, Alice Leost. Hello. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you, Latvians. Uh, and now we are having the second Baltic state yeah, and good. it is Lithuania. And we are having two girls from Lithuania. So who would like to speak first? Vir Virgilia yes. or Theodora? Virgilia. Theodora is not on uh, now on phone, I see. Uh, so I do not know what I can say more important than Mr. Darius said. He is very right in his opinion. Uh, I uh, read a, a, a sentence of Barbara Bush. At the end of your life, you will never regret that you have never passed an exam at some point in your life, that you have not won a dispute that is important to you or that you have not made a good deal but you will really regret how little time you spent with your husband friend child or parents and uh, i think that in this time we uh, need to to look uh, very um, close to to our uh, lover people it is very important uh, at this time. And uh, this pandemic highlighted how strongly we are connected to e each other, how dependent we are on each other. We need to hope that this crisis will make us better, softer, more thoughtful or of others. It is very healthy to disconnect from the knowledge not to plan for the future for some time and to rest as much as possible during the low tide of the virus. virus. When we rest, we make more rational decisions, which is especially important in difficult situations. And we need to live now and here. Uh, and uh, about uh, the influence uh, uh, positive influence. I want to uh, bring your attention that uh, ties between family members have strengthened it now. It is very ancient anxiety, a desire to help. Direct contacts decreases, but remote uh, connections are increased. Uh, the same in the case of social contacts there is some adaptation to the situation. Elderly people understand they need to protect themselves, but young people behave too bravely. There is no great panic. Uh, there is no great panic in our society in Lithuania. We, we have not so big uh, uh, influence significantly increased trips uh, by bike, uh, shooter or roller skate in and around the city. Uh, greatly increased travels in our country, knowledge uh, of our country. We have a very nice nature, a lot of lakes and forests and people this summer we traveled a lot in Lithuania, not abroad, but in our country. And teleworking is increasing in many cases. Uh, young people like it, uh, uh, and uh, many of the young people said that they, they do, do not want to uh, come back to the work in, in the working places, uh, because he needed to be um, freely realizing their ideas and working according to the established work schedule. 
but the bad situation is with kids because kids miss school, friends, and just uh, routine. Still, most schools have announced distance learning. Also, it, it is, in my view, a terrible, difficult task for both children and parents. And uh, good practice uh, example, I can uh, name the governmental TV uh, uh, project uh, World After COVID-19. In this project by, by TV is discussion, discussions about uh, how we, the, the, our life will change after COVID. So we can think about this uh, positive and uh, look forward with uh, positive that we can change uh, everything. Yeah. Thank you, Vagiria. Uh, I have to, <laughs> I have to watch the time. And <clears throat> you talked about uh, to live in the present time and not to plan for a while. Uh, but it is exactly one aspect that is so important for for people like still, you know, thinking about the future. And we in Europe have to think about our next meeting. So we will come to, to that back uh, at the end of this uh, Zoom meeting. And I would like to give the floor to Professor Olga Murceva from Macedonia. Olga, hello, hello from zero point of Macedonia in Skopje. Beside this river, Varda always the same from centuries and will continue like this river, river going, going. Thank you very much for very nice experience. You have mentioned different of you. And what will I put now? I will tell that uh, need to take care about uh, that we are different generations, six different generations till now we have the first is after the, in the second war generation participating. Baby boomers, we are, you, me and like this together here. After came this X generation, our children generation, 1960 to 1980, uh, with higher education, with family orientation, very active now. Y generation is uh, this millennial generation, 1980, 2000, and they are people with quick adaptation to new technology, with Facebook communication, and they are changing the world now in this moment, very important. Generation Z or after millennials, generation 1997 till 2012, much more quickly growing with tablet in hands, also prefer virtual communication and we just try to touch these <laughs> skills of them. Pretend for higher education, for provocative workplaces. We have now this alpha generation, 2010, 2012, much more, more in technology, but in my neighbors here, two months ago, we have a newborn, David is the name. I asked them, why you put it, uh, the name David? Oh, because he will be in battle with uh, Goliath. And who is Goliath? Corona. Oh, this is Corona generation, I say now. Now came another generation. Other uh, uh, connection with our topic now, we have with the type of the family. Is a nuclear or a large family, or one parent or after parent family or empty nest family. 
very near to this situation is the syndrome of emptiness uh, family we mentioned in psychology because children left the home we parents we need to stay with so much uh, with them connected with them and this is a new kind of adjustment disorder we have now or is the similar with this empty neck yes we try to be in connection with uh, new technology try to be up to this but really is different it's important i mentioned different generation because we need to be up to communicate with different generations who have different specificity and not only to know how to use this new technology but uh, to learn and to have much more communication skills as we call this non-violent communication to uh, know to listen carefully for each other or as we call this to use much more I messages and like this I will not tell now what is in this uh, nonviolent communication important. For me a good practice is for example at attention to quiet and deep uh, breath breathing. Somebody mentioned us here here and now. I inhale and I exhale, I inhale and I exhale, and repeat like this just to be much more quiet. Yes, uh, Dana mentioned it and the other people to be positive, positive mind. Really, this positive energy from me enlarged the positive energy around me and in all planet and may, maybe much more larger. My experience is now that uh, we are challenged for a new approach to life. For me, I have some kind of metanoia experience. Unity with the other people who are maybe in other city or in another country or in another, um, how to tell, maybe in the other world in the end, in the sky. Online communication feel me uh, not to have borders. Borders does not exist now for me. And important is this free will to influence the other positively. And important in the end, I will tell that for me is that nothing is eternal. Keep in mind that these two shall pass. For us, Europe cooperation is very important to maintain our good friendship. And Really, together we are invited for a new style of life, for a new world system, for more justice, more equality, better environment. I don't like this new reality just in the end to tell you, but also I don't <laughs> like to go back to the what was normal before of what is today corona pandemic normal. I would like to build a new, better normal, but together with you and also with all different generation we have and can in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Olga, very much. Bye bye. <laughs> so it was. Olga is a professor of psychology, so we are always getting a very wide, you know, view at, at uh, the, the problem, at the topic. So thank you so much. So now I would like to give the floor to a new Iraq member from Russia, uh, Svetlana 
Hansen. Uh, Svetlana, the floor is yours. Hi, everybody. Yes, yes. Uh, do you hear me now? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Hello. <laughs> and uh, first of all, I'm very grateful to be here and to be the newcomer into Europe community. Thank you very much for such respect and uh, um, such uh, hope <laughs> to have Russia between you. And uh, first of all, I, I would like to say that in Russia nowadays, the situation with uh, pandemic is not so much uh, strict. Uh, uh, the authorities, they reduce uh, some measures, restricting measures, and uh, that allowed us, our organization, House of Project, to start working with the seniors uh, since the first days of June. And uh, we, we met uh, every week and uh, we try to create something useful for other elderly. So we are now in the process of making network uh, of mutual support and development. Uh, we call it uh, good neighbors. And we are making the groups, neighboring groups uh, on um, various topics. Um, and the goal is to, to pick up our knowledge, our potential and our skills and try to, um, to exchange, try to in empower other people who are most passive in these times you know, in Russia, there is one aspect that very much uh, frustrates the people, especially seniors. Uh, they're a little bit fall behind IIT technologies. So it means that um, m most of the people are under 70. They're not so very quick with IT technologies. And uh, also, I, I guess that my senior volunteers uh, which I consider more advanced in this field, they, they feel also a little bit um, problems, barriers, using network as uh, uh, Skype or uh, Zoom. So we try now to make, uh, to, to, to deliver these knowledges to our community members and try to empower them to use it more active because it's one of the chances to feel uh, other people connecting with you. So uh, also we try to make a lot of empowering events. Uh, so in the end of September, we organized a street event in, in the yard near our office and to attract other seniors living all around this district and try to share with them our positive mood. <laughs> and uh, try to attract them into our network uh, groups, neighboring groups. So um, I wouldn't like to, to eat a lot of time. So it's my first uh, debut. Um, so I try to be shorter and uh, thank you for attention and thank you me to be here. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Svetlana, for being with us. Uh, we are very pleased that we got you as a new member during our conference in uh, Moscow last year. So uh, now on my list is uh, Slovakia. Uh, Slovakia, and I have registered uh, three persons, Janko Lipianski, Maria Čunderlíková, and Aneta Zubekova. So who is with us? I can see only Aneta. Uh, Monique is Janko Lipianski and Maria Chunderlikova with us. I don't know. I see Aneta. Aneta. Um, so it looks like that Aneta is the only uh, Slovak representative right now. So Aneta, the floor is yours. Okay. Do you hear me? Yes. 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 Uh, Jan Kolipiansky is apologized. He has a lot of program. Uh, the, the headline is the fight of 13th pension for, uh, for seniors. And he charged me to, to give you some, some brief information how the situation looks like in Slovakia. 
concerning maintaining of family relations. Uh, uh, I realize a small um, small observations in my in my surroundings uh, among uh, seniors and uh, and the result is uh, several scenarios how the family used to, to contact uh, uh, during this uh, this pandemic crisis. Uh, uh, first model is uh, when the family is uh, is living uh, in nearness or not far away. They contact uh, regularly, and seniors helps uh, help to to parents uh, with the program with children because in the first wave of pandemic it was uh, learning at home. Yes, then uh, parents, lot of parents uh, ha have uh, their home office and seniors uh, replace them in afternoon programs. Second scenario is when, when the family is not living in nearness, when part is near and part is in distance in, in the frame of Slovakia. It's a problem to contact and they prefer to contact by phone or personal visits in two, three months according to the circumstances. But, but the biggest problem is when the part of family is there are there are some scenarios uh, among my uh, my colleagues and friends. Uh, for example, uh, part of the family from from Slovakia staying longer in abroad uh, to wait for the um, not so strict condition for returning home, or uh, they they postpone the personal meeting uh, uh, to avoid uh, uh, to avoid. Uh, quarantine or the part of the family living in abroad uh, traveling to Slovakia stayed longer here and the first part of the visit is quarantine and then our meetings and visits or um, uh, part of the family living in abroad traveling to Slovakia with fresh negative COVID-19 tests. And there is one specific situation in the repeating in a lot of cases when the part of family is in Czech Republic. A lot of students from Slovakia studying in Czech Republic and obtain uh, such a temporary residence permission. And in that situation, parents uh, prefer to, to meet personally, for example, somewhere in, in border area. If they are traveling by train, then uh, coming from, uh, from Czech Republic in, uh, in the border uh, station Kuti, and then uh, exchange of information, gifts, etc., cetera, et cetera. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Uh, the situation is getting worse uh, presently all over Europe and we are facing uh, more measures and uh, we somehow uh, have to cope with the situation. It is our only chance. We, uh, we can't do otherwise. So I would like to uh, give the floor to Slovenia, uh, Jessica Puhar. Uh, thank you very much. To all best regards, in Slovenia, the second wave of COVID-19 affects also middle age generation. The people who are still active, in opposite to the situation of the first wave, when uh, the old people predominated. In last Sunday, in Slovenia, an epidemic was declared. This means the highest level of tightening of preventive measures. All fields of life are, in a way, adapted to this new situation. Families are pushed into their own circle. All schooling and study is again carried out at a distance, with the exception of primary school children from first to fifth class. Some parents are working a distance, some parents are working normally, so the situations are very different in the families. But this situation severely affects them. 
if it lasts for a long time, experts predict it will have serious long-term consequences for children, not only because of the lack of knowledge that they cannot adequately acquire in present conditions, but also because of the small opportunities for socialization and personal development. Fortunately, in Slovenia, young people maintain social contact with smartphones and computers. However, this is not the same situation in all regions. In some places, they do not have a network that would allow digital connections. With a large percentage of poor people and an increase of unemployment due to the obstacles that the measures pose to the functioning of the economy, such equipment is not available to many due to financial incapacity. We have some bright points. We noticed examples of donors who have equipped some schools with computers, thus enabling the increase of equal opportunities for young people for virtual learning. TV and radio stations have introduced a series of additional programs aimed at young people thus breaking the, mo the monetary of living and learning in a close family circle and connecting them all over it virtually with their peers. In this situation, the question of contacts is also actual in the extended family between parents, grandparents, and grandchildren. But it is also the opportunity for mutual learning because there's a lot of lack of skills and knowledge about using digitalization among all the persons. However, there is no possibility for such a help for the people in nursing homes, especially not in environments where the virus has invited and protective measures are being taken against the spread of infection. Perhaps some innovation was made by musicians. They performed a lot of concerts in front of the buildings of the uh, of uh, for all the people nursing there or living there. In our organization, we developed a program who is, which is um, which is uh, performing 16 years. But in this situation, our volunteers who are leading and who are making visits to the people over the 69 had to who had to adapt their, their forms of acting, you know. They help now with, and they are still helping now, with telephones, with computers, with, uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, writing letters and so on. And we are performing a lot of these uh, actions. Only one example that I will be shot during the first wave, uh, over, uh, over, uh, over 35,000 phone calls and other actions were performed. So, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Jessica. It was a very comprehensive description of the situation. And you, it, if you would have not been speaking on behalf of Slovenia, it could be on behalf of the Czech Republic, because there are very many similar aspects in our country where we have also distance education, distance education right now, and the teachers are, you know, somehow uh, stressing that uh, it is a replacement for the uh, for uh, the real uh, real action between uh, between a teacher and a student, but that it can't replace that. Uh, desire for socializing because the children are terribly missing that. Yeah. So, and not only the children, but all the, all the generations. Yes. So thank you very much. And now we are coming to Switzerland. 
Oh, Roland, uh, Roland Grunder is with us. So welcome, Gr <laughs> Roland. So good to have you. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to be to have been late this morning, but I had some technical problems changing the place and uh, Wi-Fi was not was not function really good. And well, every technical problem we have, all to, all of you, you have that uh, quite daily when we are working with new technology. Uh, in Switzerland, the situation is uh, as nearly as the same as in every uh, your countries also. Uh, the government has uh, yesterday be harder with decision uh, with the uh, people coming together and uh, uh, well all the the, the uh, decision we have to uh, more and more go to, to uh, a technical uh, solution with the uh, Basically, with the with the, the interactive uh, solution, but uh, well, life must go on. In Switzerland, we have one a, a big part of the of the population is uh, slowly, slowly tired, uh, and especially because of the economic situation. The economic situation will. Uh, so we expect also in Switzerland uh, will be more uh, difficult as this uh, as the, the health uh, situation. The health situation is uh, a, a, a medical situation. Okay, uh, the virus makes people sick. We have le less and less people dying. Uh, well, that's that's a, a positive uh, way to see, but the uh, people will in the next coming month die from the economic situation. And that is very difficult. Uh, this, the second wa wave is not more, not less than, uh, than uh, the first wave. Uh, we have in Switzerland still in my organization still to fight against uh, the, uh, the exclusion uh, systematically of older people. We say older people over 60 or over 65, you are in danger, you are, uh, and, and that's not, you're a risk population, and that's not true. I mean, uh, if, I, if I'm 50 years old and if I have some heart problems, I, I'm also a person in risk, on risk uh, of the pandemic. Uh, that is, uh, what we call, what I call also uh, more and more a um, uh, doctor or medicine terrorism. Uh, the uh, following of the economic situation will be much more difficult uh, because they take people to precarity. And that is something we have to think about, uh, well, uh, I think in all your countries. And the, the, the only thing I would like to suggest uh, to Europe, if I have the, the floor for one minute more, uh, is to go on to bring your information. What are your country doing? What are your uh, decisions of the country doing? How can we travel to, to you, to your country? Because one point in Switzerland is very difficult, in particular the tourism is dying, really dying. Hotelry, restaurant, and so on is, is dying. And so we have to keep that on uh, in Switzerland and also in your country. We have to continue to, to, to be interactive. To, to, and so, but we need to have the information. Please get the information. I would suggest that uh, Europe on the website we have on each for each country uh, a, a, a part or a page which says what is the country what is your country doing in uh, in economic problems the accessibility nobody knows uh, what happened if i'm uh, i don't know uh, probably you discussed that before uh, are you going to hungary uh, but the problem is coming back uh, if you have to be in quarantine for 10 days or, uh, or more, it will be a difficulty. I would suggest, please, give us information, short information, because 
life must go on. And uh, our goal from, for me is to keep the network function and to have those information you said this morning, it was interesting, but please give in short, short list uh, uh, that we have access systematically to that short list. Thank you very much and uh, have a nice day out of Switzerland. Thank you, Roland. We definitely will give you the information uh, what will happen in the future at the end of this meeting. And now I would like to give the floor to Elizabeth Kletter from the United Kingdom. Good morning. Thank, thank you very much indeed. It's been very interesting hearing everybody's um, very similar situations and then this, the, the very specific situations. I think in terms of uh, our task this morning, I would like to make um, just some differentiations, which I think others have made. Um, the, certainly in my personal experience, the connections with uh, my family and my extended family have been, have increased in a way since the, the pandemic. Um, people seem to be more urgent a, a, about this, and it certainly has been the younger members of the family. My my um, my husband's family are in Canada, Australia, UK, uh, and um, there's been very active um, efforts to to connect with everybody at the same time, which over the time scales is um, the the time zones is not is not an easy thing, but it's been fun and it's been great and better than before. Um, we're making more of an effort. I think for the the local community, our fam my the family of the local community that I live in, um, our efforts have been to um, uh, we are back in the UK in, in, in more difficult circumstances and although in London we are not completely iso uh, being isolated or in the highest level of, of um, uh, uh, lockdown as it were, um, it's, uh, it is more difficult but in the local community we meet, we can see each other in the local park and um, we make efforts to take our exercise in the park and say hello at a distance. Um, that is also so for my um, goddaughter and her family who visited last weekend, but we were not allowed to meet in the house. And although it was cold, uh, we, we were in the park. Um, the, um, the local pensioners forum of which I'm a member have had resources from um, charitable organizations to be able to keep in contact with those who are isolated and don't have a family. And we cannot always assume that, um, th that older people have children, have, uh, they may be part of an extended family, but may not always, always be in contact. And some, as, you, as everybody has mentioned, uh, are isolated. And therefore, um, those resources have gone, and I think somebody was talking, I now can't remember, I've made notes, but I can't remember who it was that said they had a telephone, a, a little telephone link, and somebody phones four people every day, and um, that is similar in, in, in our local organization. There is also, um, uh, as some of you may know, um, with uh, Josika, I we are... Um, active in Age Platform Europe and globally for the um, working on a, a convention for the human rights of older people. So there is that family as well that we are working on and we've worked virtually um, around developing a statement for the Commission on the Status of Women about older women, the impact of um, being able to participate um, as, as many of you do with your governments. And I think that is so important um, that we keep that voice even, uh, it's difficult to keep the government's toes to the fire as we have a saying in, in English, but it's important that we still do that despite not being able to meet face to face um, with them. And, and also too, there is the Eurek family. It is just so nice to be able to 
see um, people, to see you all, and to hear what what is being done because those um, it is your and our experiences that the examples that we can use when we are writing those uh, reports and statements to um, the United Nations. So thank you. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your uh, report. Um, uh, Elizabeth has been representing um, Iraq for many years in the United Nations. So Good. now I would like to give the floor to Galina Polyakova from Ukraine. Thank you. Dear colleagues, I, I'm sure that I will hardly tell anything new because the situation is about the same in every country. What are we doing? We try to do our best and to help people who stay at home and uh, for those uh, who care for them. So we um, do the um, uh, contact line. Uh, we um, help uh, uh, families in um, transporting their uh, older parents uh, to the uh, hospitals, to the polyclinics. And uh, we also do the um, study videos, uh, how to um, care for older uh, vulnerable people and demented people. And these videos are, uh, on, um, are available on our Facebook and uh, on YouTube. Uh, now we did uh, five and uh, five more are in the process. Uh, so perhaps I won't uh, take much time from you because uh, everything available possible was already told. Uh, instead, I'd like to take an opportunity of meeting you all and to ask uh, uh, our colleagues uh, who live in the countries from the Visegrad group uh, whether we can apply for a grant together. So there are uh, grants uh, Visegrad Plus, and uh, if uh, uh, there are any colleagues who would like to um, do some project together, I would be happy to uh, discuss this with you, maybe tomorrow, yeah. whenever it is possible for you. Because uh, when we are speaking, it's good, but when we are doing, it's even better. So, thank you. Yes, thank you, Galina. So, we will, uh, we will discuss it with, uh, with Hungary, Slovakia, and uh, the Czech Republic. We don't have anyone from Poland uh, today with us, but we will see what we can do, definitely. <laughs> thank, thank you for the thank offer. And now I will check the time. It is um, so. Dirk, do you want me to to tell to remind about uh, the next conference on uh, November twenty seventh, and to uh, to reveal that uh, definitely we are not able to organize uh, the, the a live conference in Budapest because of all the existing all the existing restrictions uh, so we have to deal with that and we will definitely give you the detailed information about how the next conference uh, will go on and uh, also it is not only the conference, but also the elections, which must take place uh, this year. So Dirk, may I give you the floor, please? Yeah, thank you, Dana. And thanks to everybody who contributed today uh, to this, uh, I would call it a mosaic of a picture with many details of what um, is going on in your respective countries and how you perceive the uh, um, the problems and the opportunities. One thing seems to emerge very clearly, that is that the um, European society by this pandemic is uh, profoundly changing. We, um, we have to invent new ways of uh, relating to each other. Um, not all are new, but um, how intensely 
uh, technologies are used, uh, in which way, with whom, etc. That is is a very interesting shift. Um, as you know, I'm a lawyer and a sociologist from the sociological point of view. That um, is is really fascinating. Uh, what you reported from your different countries and from your different families and uh, environments. Um, there's one thing which uh, came up and which is um, which makes us all very happy. That is that um, underlying was a sentence: "Don't complain." Don't complain only, there are positive developments. And uh, I found um, lately um, a sentence from the philosopher Immanuel Kant, whom you all know. And he said something like, intelligence and human freedom is to understand the realities of life and the necessities of our situations and to adapt to them adequately. I think this is very true. We have to adapt, not to complain, but we have to adapt to the new circumstances and find new ways and means on how to respond to them and to keep in touch with the others because a society lives from its members and from the cohesion of the members. And social and human cohesion is something which is certainly in the center of your act. We want to keep in contact. We want to exchange information, but not only information, but also feelings, the warmth of being together, etc. And that is something which we try to achieve even by the means of such um, a conference and um, the the way of how you all um, explain your perceptions, your feelings, etc., is of the highest value which I could, which I can imagine. Well, we all will go on trying to be as close as possible to others, and to perhaps if to detect those who are in solitude who are the lost ones and find them proactively and say, come on, I'm here. I care about you. I think about you. Come closer and I will come closer too. As I, I mentioned something, the lost friends of the past. Perhaps we can discover them again and uh, establish new and broader networks. But it's also something which we need to cultivate that is the language of emotions, how to express to other people that we care about them, that we are concerned, that we would like to help, etc. Okay, that is my lesson from this, these two, almost two hours which we spent together. We will have the recording again. Uh, available for you if you want to see again what um, Gabor said or what Paul said or what Aneta said or Elizabeth and uh, even show it to friends if you want to do so. Thank you very much for your contributions Monique, thank you very much for the arrangement. Um, very well done again the fourth time. Dana, thank you very very much for the um, moderation. Um, you were, as usual, a very good moderator and added even lots of details from your own environment and from the Czech Republic. Um, we uh, meet again, if everybody agrees, on Friday the 27th of November. Uh, that will be a pleasure. We will send to you um, again issues which we would like to discuss with you. Um, we know that our first press release, which we gave to a larger public, had effects because many jour jour uh, journalists pointed out that we have to differentiate between older persons. They are not just one homogeneous group and that we 
can't leave them in their homes alone. Today, politicians, at the beginning, they said, no, 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 leave these people uh, just behind the doors of their homes and of the institutions, etc. Today, medical persons and politicians say, no, open the doors again to be in contact with the older persons, but take precaution and be sure that you wear a mask, that you don't infect the other ones, etc. But don't leave them in isolation. That was a nice effect which we which we had and which was largely discussed, not only by us, by many others too, but we certainly helped through our discussion put it into the center of concern. Again, thank you very much indeed. We close five minutes early. That is a good performance, except if somebody has some message close to the heart and would like to share that with us. I have a message close to my heart. I would like to thank to Gabor and Eva uh, that they have worked so diligently. They developed such an enormous effort to secure our conference in Budapest, which will not happen now because of, of all the circumstances. Uh, so we, we only hope that uh, the next meeting, which will happen in reality, that we will meet each other uh, in presence, will be in the in the beginning of April, as it was announced, between the 7th and 11th April 2021. And uh, we will give you all the details where it will happen, uh, because it was also the day, uh, we are talking about the dates given to Kiev, to uh, Galina, who has already worked very diligently on preparation. So we will take everything into consideration and let you know the details where the next meeting will happen and what it will be about. So thank you for being with us. It was a great pleasure to see you at least on the screen. And I, speaking on behalf of myself, I miss you terribly and I yearn to shake your hands in reality. And Goodbye. I other on the shoulder and have coffee together and one message to Gabo and Eva, your efforts are not lost. No, because definitely not. <laughs> we, still, we will still host that conference in beautiful Budapest, but at another date. So <laughs> thank you very much. So goodbye. Bye. 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 Nice to see you. Bye. 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 Bye.